NASA just announced the discovery of 500 new planets. They're all orbiting other stars, not our sun, but one of them shares some similarities with Earth. Just a few light years away from Earth, we received strange signals from Proxima Centauri in 2019, confirmed by Australian scientists. The message is used in the January 30th rocket and satellite. This made scientists doubt that maybe our signals are bouncing back to us. But those signals were coming from interstellar space. There was no correction from their Earth. In October 2020, these signals were named Breakthrough Candidate What, which means DLSI is on. Now scientists believe that Proxima Centauri B is sending them, as when the satellite was moved away from Proxima B, the signal suddenly stopped. This proves that the signal was coming from Proxima B. But before we get any further, please like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and hit the bell icon so you never miss our next uploaded video. Let's get back to the video. If we talk about our closest Proxima Centauri star system, it is around 20 stars, as our solar system has only one sun. In the center of the star system, there's another place orbiting the sun, and a third question was present, which we also call Proxima Centauri. It allows both stars to orbit like Earth permits the sun. Just like that, until now, there are only 12 rounds of Centauri in our solar system, from which a message from the planet goes to its habitat, and there were aliens in it as well. In their satellite, they are also using technology similar to ours. This will be just like you and your friend meeting after a long time. This means that we should not look for artificial light, but should search for signs of civilization in the dark. In this direction, scientists involved in this project are working on the Breakthrough Starshot project. On the opposite side, power will be obtained from a light and strong material made of a site, and they will be sent into space at the speed of a light torch with the help of a powerful laser. After that, they reached near Proxima B. We will provide information about its environment and other sectors. This means that if the signal is received by cigarette, its confirmation will also be received. Now, we don't need to go so far to find a super hit because in the March future present in our vicinity, humans will also live on Mars. If it wants, it can live on the path of humans. The environment here should also have 10% nitrogen and some amount of carbon dioxide. Along with this, the temperature here should also be around 14 to 20 degrees Celsius. It is believed that to sustain human life, there was no shortage of oxygen in the atmosphere of Mars, similar to Mars, about 400 crore years ago. This thing is still going on, although some part of the water has accumulated in the blood camp. With the help of this water, we can make a small speech at 8 o'clock. Similarly, Oxygen is also present in the box in quantity. It is hidden in quantity. We can bring one message out. It is a good idea to take it. This will require us to send many thousands of laser machines to India and target the well-known target in space by melting it. We will have to use a solar pump, and it will run from solar panels. If we succeed in creating a network that is 30 times bigger than India, we can melt March by focusing on it. Proxima Centauri, with its multitude of stars, presents a fascinating celestial landscape, vastly different from our solar system. This intriguing system has sparked intense interest among astronomers and astrophysicists, who are eager to explore its unique characteristics and the potential for habitable planets. Granular materials like wheat flour, cocoa, and dust can also exhibit cohesion, which pulls individual grains into clumps. On Bennu, Scientists had expected cohesion to act like a bit of glue between the rocks, making its loose surface more solid. But the tag event showed that Bennu's uppermost layers are nearly cohesionless, deforming under stress like a fluid. A good analogy is a ball pit. Although the plastic balls are solid, they easily slide past one another and past boisterous children, behaving in mass like a fluid. Thanks to OSIRIS-REx, we now know that Bennu's surface is not held together by cohesion, but by gravity, or microgravity. With a minute tug, less than 100, 000 th the pool of Earth. On the Moon, gravity is 16% as strong as it is on Earth, 
and more than 16,000 times stronger than it is on Bennu. As a result, loose material in the lunar subsurface is packed together more tightly, making the moon's surface relatively firm. If a 50 kilogram mass of solid iron were to hit the moon at the same speed as the tag event, it would sink into the ground by only half a centimeter. Repeating this experiment at Bennu would yield a dramatically different result. Though the mass would strike with the same force, it would plunge 17 centimeters before stopping, over 30 times deeper than at the moon. Bennu has consistently defied scientists' expectations, as each new finding reveals another facet of this small but surprising world. Using data from OSIRIS-REx, we now have the ability to look back and accurately recreate 30 seconds on asteroid Bennu. On October 20, 2020, OSIRIS-REx made its final descent to a sample site called Nightingale. With its tagsome arm outstretched, it approached the surface at 10 cm per second, the walking pace of an insect. One second after contact, it released a canister of pressurized nitrogen, detonating an explosion of particles, and driving material into the tagsome head for sample collection. Six seconds after contact, while it was still sinking into Bennu, OSIRIS-REx fired its thrusters to begin the back-away maneuver. The engine burn lasted for 24 seconds, continuously pushing against the spacecraft and rapidly slowing its descent. Flying debris from the thrusters and the gas release pelted the science instruments, clogging them with dust. Nine seconds after contact, when OSIRIS-REx had sunk nearly half a meter into Bennu, it reversed course and began to rise. At 16 seconds, the tagsome head re-emerged from the subsurface as the spacecraft continued to accelerate. 30 seconds after contact, OSIRIS-REx shut off its thrusters and drifted away. With its sample of Bennu almost six months later on April 7, 2021, the spacecraft returned for one last flyover to observe its footprint at the point of impact was a new crater averaging 8 meters across and reaching 68 centimeters in depth thruster marks overlapped with this tagged crater. In an X pattern, increasing its volume by as much as 40%, a ridge of ejected material that had been kicked up during sample collection and then fallen back to the surface, circled the crater like a campfire ring. With a puff of gas and an engine burn, OSIRIS-REx had displaced 12 cubic meters of granular material, 6 tons of loose rock that may have been packed together as lightly as a bowl of popcorn. After a final departure maneuver in May 2021, OSIRIS-REx began a two-year journey back to Earth. Stowed on board were about 250 grams of asteroid Bennu, a bounty of scientific treasure destined for future discoveries. And there you have it. If you have any question drop them in the comment box below. And don't forget to like this video. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And hit the bell icon so you never miss our next uploaded video. We see you in the next video.